Hello artists. I hope everybody is having a great day today. Are you ready for art? We're going to be working on a really giant picture of a butterfly. So it might look a little something like this. Look, it's even too big to fit in the screen. Wow. Or if you have paints at home, you can even work on painting it in. You have lots of choices and options with this. So we're gonna get started and we're gonna have fun making our butterflies. We're gonna work on making a butterfly that is the same on both the right and the left in some ways. And we call that symmetrical, when the right side and the left side match each other. Like we can draw a line down the middle of our drawing and the right and left side would match. To do that and make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna have you take a piece of paper. I'm using a really large piece of drawing paper. If you have one, you can use a large one. If you don't, it's okay to use a smaller sheet. We're gonna fold it in half. So I'm gonna line up the edges over here and I'm gonna dance my fingers over to this part and I'm gonna slide them down the fold. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. I'm gonna slide my finger down the fold. And then I'm gonna open it up. And you are gonna need a uh, black crayon and a pencil, and then you'll need something to color with. And I'm gonna leave that up to you. If you have crayons, that's fine. If you wanna use markers and crayons or colored pencils, or even if you have watercolor paints, and you're allowed to use them, they would be wonderful for this project. But I know not everybody has them at home, so use whatever it is that you have. Okay, so we're gonna start up at the top. We're gonna come down a little ways, and we're gonna make a shape that's kind of like a circle, but it's gonna be kind of big. But we're not gonna close the bottom, okay? We're gonna leave, oops, we're gonna leave that open. And then we're gonna draw a line down like this. We're gonna curve it when we get to the bottom and we're gonna go back up. And we're gonna give our butterfly some antenna. And you can draw your antenna however you want. I put a little curl on the end of mine, but you don't have to. And then we're gonna go back to the face and we're gonna draw some eyes. And you can draw your eyes any way you want. And then you can draw a big smile. Okay. Now, for the wings, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here on the body and we're gonna draw a line that's a diagonal. So. We're not going straight across. We're gonna go on an angle and we're gonna draw it up toward the corner. Boop, 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 stop. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Boop, 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 stop. Like that. And then we're going to take our pencil and we're gonna, whoop, I'm gonna make sure you can see that on the screen. There we go. Then we're gonna curve this around and go down about halfway, halfway down the body, about there. And then I'm gonna connect it. So I'm gonna bring this line back over. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna curve it down. I'm gonna go about halfway down. See how it kind of lines up? And then I'm gonna Bring it back over to the body. And then for the bottom of our wings, I'm gonna start here, and I'm just gonna kinda curve it all the way back to the body. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, I'm gonna curve it all the way back to the body. Now you can put your pencil away, and we're gonna need our black crayon now so we're gonna take that black crayon and we're gonna start to trace 
our lines. Um, I think I'm gonna work on the eyes first, and I'm gonna color in that pupil first. I'm not gonna have you color in other things with the black crayon, but if you wanna color in the pupil to make them stand out a little bit, go ahead. And then just go ahead and start tracing. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna be a little silly here, I'm gonna add eyelashes to my butterfly. I don't think they really have eyelashes, but I kind of like it with eyelashes. You don't have to unless you want to. All right, and then I'm gonna trace the rest. I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna trace the head and the body. And then I'm gonna trace the wings. I'm gonna move this over just a little bit so you have a better view. There we go. So right now, the wings are symmetrical. It means that they are both the same on the right and the left. And if we had a line right down the middle like we have our fold, that both sides are the same. Okay. So we're gonna add some designs with our black crayon and we're gonna work on that on the top to on the top part of each wing first. So I'm gonna have you for this part, I am gonna have you practice drawing what I'm drawing, but then on the bottom I'm gonna have you come up with your own ideas. So up here, we're gonna practice a diagonal line. We're gonna start up here, and we're gonna draw a diagonal line coming down. And then we're gonna do the same on this side. And then we're gonna add another line to it, like that. And then we're gonna add, let's try a zigzag line coming down, something different. And then let's try a second zigzag line. We'll get some practice with that. Ooh, that one got a little goofy on the end. Oh well. Um, and then let's try, how about a line that looks like ocean waves like this? Or the waves on a lake. And we'll try another set of those. Okay, so my wings are almost symmetrical with the design. I think this one's a little bigger, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Now on the bottom, I'm gonna have you come up with your own design, but remember, whatever you draw on this side, you're gonna draw it on this side. So go ahead and start. I'm gonna work on one too. Yours does not have to look like this. You're gonna come up with your own design. And then when we're done, we're gonna color it in. We're gonna try to make this side, you're gonna try to use the same colors in the same spot. So if I put red here, I'm gonna put red here. So like I said earlier, you can use markers, you can use crayons, um, whatever it is that you have, or if your family does have paint at home, and they're okay with you using your paint, go ahead.
So I chose purple here in this space. So I'm gonna use purple over here too. On this side. And then I might even use this purple in other places since I have it in my hand. I'm thinking I might use it here. Oops. So if I used it there, I need to try to use it in the same spot on this side. Let's see. So that would be this spot right here. I'll use a combination of crayons and markers. I kind of like them both together. So I'm going to keep that marker handy. Um, I think I'm going to start with a blue. So you don't have to choose the colors I'm choosing. I'm not sure if I said that already. You can choose whatever colors you want. You could have all, um, you know, different types of blues and purples and greens, or you could have beautiful pinks and yellows and oranges and reds. It's totally up to you, your choice. When we're making art, there are sometimes certain things that I'll have you do that I do, like I had you draw the lines on the top the same way because I want you to get the practice or I want you to understand how something works. But I never ever expect your art to look like mine. Everybody's art is different and that's what makes art so beautiful. And we can learn by doing something that someone else has done. You know, like if we see a piece of art and we really like it and we wanna to try to make it ourselves, that's a wonderful way to learn. And that's one way we can get better at it. But using your own creativity in it and your own ideas also helps you grow as an artist. So that's why I always try to give you uh, opportunities in your artwork so that you can choose your own colors or your own lines or your own type of background or little details you want to add. I always try to do that as much as possible. Okay. So now I'm going to choose a different crayon. I'm going to color in that ends with this one. Oh, I didn't even think about it, but if you have oil pastels at home, um, they would work really nicely for this project too. I, I know a couple students had told me before that they had oil pastels. Um, but, and, and what those are, are they're similar to crayons, but they are smoother too, almost like paint, almost like paint in a stick. So if you happen to have those, you are welcome to use those too if you are allowed to use them. And if you don't have them, 
that's okay. I actually don't have any here at home. I like this combination of the purples and the uh, blues. I think I might add green into the mix too. I'm kind of thinking about what color I would want to make the body too, because I can color that any color. I might use the green that's in my hand. That would be kind of nice. choose whatever color you want for the body when you get to that point when you're ready to work on it. If you're using crayons and you're about to go over the black crayon there, I'd be really careful because I think the black crayon might smudge a little bit. So you might just want to kind of carefully, yeah, it's smudging a little bit. You might just want to kind of color up to the edge of the mouth and the eyes and all, but try not to go over it too much, if that makes sense. If you're painting with watercolors at home, you can completely go over the crayon. It, it'll work very well. Um, but with crayons over crayons, sometimes it smudges it. Okay. There, oops. Okay. There we go. So, let me see. I kind of want to try another green. Let me try this one. Oops, wrong end. Okay. Oh, I like that. It's like a pretty lime green. Makes me think of springtime. I'm excited. I can't wait to see all of your beautiful, colorful butterflies. Have you seen any outside yet? About a month ago, I went to a city called Grand Rapids here in Michigan, and there's a garden there called the Frederick Meyer Sculpture Garden. And all of that is, or most of it's outside. There's a little bit that's inside, but um, part, the one part that was inside is a butterfly garden. And unfortunately, the butterflies hadn't hatched yet out of their cocoon, so there really weren't any butterflies flying around. But normally when you go there, you can see lots and lots of beautiful butterflies and they'll fly around, and they might even come and land on you. Um, and they don't hurt you or anything. They're just kind of there checking everything out. Um, the I know the Detroit Zoo has a butterfly house that's really, really nice, too, that works the same kind of way. And I am not, honestly, I can't remember if the Toledo Zoo has one, but I would bet that they probably do. So if you're ever there maybe you can check into it and see because you might get to see some real life real life butterflies remember we're coloring the same little sections the same color on the right and the left 
because we want our butterflies to look symmetrical.
and I'm all done. When you're all done with your butterfly, you'll have everything colored in. So the body will be colored in and all the little sections of your wings. And if you painted, same thing, you're gonna have it all colored in except for maybe the whites of the eyes. Everything else can be colored in. My goodness, the butterflies are so big, they're taking over. I hope that you had a lot of fun today making your butterfly. I hope you had fun using different types of lines, different colors, different shapes. We even talked about diagonal lines and symmetry. So we learned a lot of different art words today and we used a lot of different types of, um, different types of lines and shapes in our project. I hope you had a great time making yours and I will see you next time. Bye.